homesteading, to prepping, to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Okay, here's how our plants are doing under the lights this morning. Okay, so you see how everybody's growing. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today we're out and uh, going to work on our raised beds. If you follow the channel, you know I have two raised beds. That's all I do for raised beds. The rest of my garden is out in the, a traditional garden. But I've got two raised beds here. One of the beds is for herbs, and one of the beds is for lettuces. And then later in the year, we put carrots in there. So let's have a look and see how the herb bed survived the winter. Here's our herb bed. Just so you can see, this right here is thyme. The thyme is done really well. Uh, this is mint. Oh, and it smells like mint. Then right here, the chives are coming, are still coming up. Uh, right here is oregano. Oh, there's still some things growing up in it, but this is all oregano on this end of the bed. See, there's some onions from last year still coming up. Then here in the center, this Believe it or not, is rosemary that survived the winter. Now we'll prune that back. We'll prune that back and that'll make another new bush. And this is rosemary as well. Okay. Now this grass I'm pulling out here is lemongrass. Okay. I'll just cut that back. It will come right back and do its thing. Right here, get this moved out of the way. This is marjoram, or Greek oregano, if you want to call it that. Okay, so it's still there. Right there, that's regular mint. Up the, what I showed you before was spearmint. Get this pulled back here a little bit. This lemon grass. Now it'll come right back. It's not a problem. Uh, right here, I'll have to tear off a leaf. I'm not certain. Now, on the other side over there, right there, those, that's sage. That sage has survived the winter. Now, we had planted uh, right in this area, of course, coriander. But coriander doesn't make it through the winter, so. But most of our herbs have survived the winter. Well, it's Saturday, March the 14th. And it's time to get our lettuce beds ready. Well, last year, I did a year without a weed eater and a year without spray. And let me tell you something, I'm going back to the weed eater this year. I tried that. I remember growing up as a young man and Paul never used a weed eater. He had us, we used a mowing blade. But there was a lot of weeds growing up everywhere. I remember he'd go to his chicken house and there was about a three or four foot wide trail and the rest of it was weeds high as your head on either side. So I don't like that. So I'm going back to the weed eater this year. I hate the weed eater, it hurts my back. There it is. Uh, so now we've got to get this lettuce bed ready. You can see it had some weeds grow up in it over the summer. We didn't replant carrots cause I got sick and just didn't do it. And this grew up with some grass and stuff in it. Uh, we, uh, I had to get the, the tractor through here. So Crystal had a little shelf that was sitting right here. I just laid it over in there because I had to get the tractor up in here. So I'm just going to lay this over. 
Okay, you can see the bed. Uh, what I've got to do, of course, Crystal had a fly swat out here because we had uh, bumblebees made a nest in the bed last year while she was harvesting lettuce. So she was out here swatting bees and harvesting lettuce. It was kind of comical to watch. But anyway, uh, we set this in here over top of the entrance to the lettuce. So I'm just going to set that off. Now, we need to get this ready to be a lettuce bed again. So, what we want to do, and to begin with, is just pull all of this stuff, this dead stuff, out of here. Always wear a good set of gloves. Believe it or not, there's going to be some rose bushes in here. Right there they are. Everybody asks, why do you have such a tall raised bed? Well, the truth is, Crystal can come out here. She's a little shorter than me. Crystal can come out here and harvest her lettuce without bending over much. And it makes it so much easier on her back as I try and make it on my back. So she harvests these beds. I plant them, maintain them, and she harvests them. So. What do I use? What am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to take this potato fork, okay? It's not a hay fork. It's not a pitch fork. This is a potato fork. It's just four heavy-duty tines. Pull it over there where you can see. Compare them to the size of my hand here. All right, it's just four heavy-duty tines. And all you do, you put it in there, and you turn this soil, and then you break it up. <clears throat> Remove any foreign matter. And I'm not worrying about, but about six inches deep, because this bed is nice and soft. Okay, and I'll do the entire bed. And pull out any of this stuff left on the surface. If there's a little bit, I won't care, but for the most part, I'll pull all that out. And don't leave any big clods. This thing's full of earthworms. Normally, what I put on the bed after I've got it all turned and most of the weeds picked up. There are still some weeds in here, but don't fret about all of them. It's just, you're just worried about nothing. Normally what I do is I put a bag or two of compost and manure on top of this. But this year, Crystal and I are kind of staying close to home. So I don't have any compost and manure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use last year's fertilizer. This is some 12-12-12. Uh, it's probably still got 6-8% nitrogen in it. Uh, it's just been sitting in the back of my Easy Go golf cart. So I'm going to take this and spread it out over the, over the bed and then I'll work it in with a standard garden rake.
And this is your time to get any clods busted up. Okay, that's got the bed. Pretty good order. I've got my bed ready for uh, the stuff. So, I buy my lettuce mixes. I know, I know, I know, that's not sustainable. But, you know, after this pandemic, you'll still be able to buy a lettuce mix. But, this is a mescaline mix. Uh, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of an ounce. And it's got spinach and it's got all kinds of lettuces. It's got arugula. There's all kinds of stuff in there. This is a bag of black seeded Simpson and butter crunch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix them both all together because we like black seeded Simpson and butter crunch a lot and have all the other spring mix in with it is awesome. So when I was a kid, we didn't have all these options. We had black seeded Simpson and we had head lettuce, romaine. But now we have all these others and it's what people call a spring mix. Now, what will this bed give us? Well. This bed, when I get it all sewed, Crystal will come out. Uh, this is March 14th. By April 1st, she can probably get her first harvest, two to three weeks. Uh, I'll sew this bed, and she'll come out and harvest about a third of it. Well, that'll last us quite a while. You know, salads with dinner. Then she'll harvest another third, and it'll last us again, and then harvest another third. By the time she harvests that last third, this first third is ready to harvest again. You know, that'll give us two or three gallon freezer bags stuffed full, each one of them, each third. So that'll keep us in lettuce all the way up into May until it gets too warm and this starts to, starts to uh, bolt. So let's get this spread it out. And all you do is take I just broadcast it by hand. And that's it. Now, how much did that lettuce cost? That's about $11 worth of lettuce seed. Uh, the bed is probably, the bed itself was free pallets, uh, probably about a dollar's worth of six mil plastic around the pallets. And then this is just dirt out of my garden. It's not fancy dirt. So I've got, this is the fourth year with this bed. And uh, so I've got probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $14 invested here for this year. So if you think about it that way, I've got $14 invested. I'm going to get back enough lettuce to where if we went to the store and bought it, we're talking about $60, $70, $80 worth of lettuce. So that's the difference. And I know exactly what's in it and what's been sprayed on it, which ain't going to be nothing. Now... Once I get the lettuces done, I take and poke in red onions. This is red onion sets. Uh, I'll poke these in and Crystal will harvest these. And I'll just poke them in around the edges. And Crystal can harvest these all spring and all end of the summer. And we will have fresh onions 
green onions that she can add to anything. We love green onions in dishes all the time. You can go back and look at one of our videos. I'll show you how to put up green onions. That's one of our favorites. Now, the way you put an onion in, for those of you who don't know, let me come over and show you. This pointy side is where the onion is going to grow from, and this is the roots. This goes in the bottom first. Now, will there be some weed into this bed? Yeah, there'll be some weeds have to come out of it. But you'd be surprised at how few there'll be. The lettuces, once they take over, they'll choke out everything else. Okay, I'm going to finish stuffing these in. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading all the time. Sometimes one, sometimes five videos. It all depends on what's going on in the homestead that day. So now it's time for me to get on to the next thing.